you're entering CNBC TV 18's Fire Safe Studio, powered by Century Ply, now with firewall technology. Welcome back. Uh, you're watching us here on Halftime Report. An interesting discussion now for you, and this is uh, with regards to the logistics space. Remember, over the last one month or so, we've seen some focus in this arena, and that's primarily because of the big listing that took place. And every time that happens, you know, everyone is forced to look at other players in this space as well. There are brokerage notes, etc. We've seen a couple of initiating coverages coming on delivery. Of course, brokerages are, uh, you know, split on how that pans out. Some extremely bullish on the long-term prospects, some worried about the valuations. Whereas uh, there have been other uh, players also which are profitable, which are finding the eyes of all the brokers. So let's get in Ram Praveen Swaminathan, who's the MD CEO at Mahindra Logistics, to discuss their business as well as the prospects for the industry going ahead. Thanks a lot, Mr. Swaminathan, for joining in. You know, from the time Mahindra Logistics has listed, you'll have transformed the business quite a bit. In fact, in FY22 itself, if I look at it, your revenues have grown at 25%, EBITDA growing at 55%, with a net profit growing at 24%. You've uh, uh, increased your supply chain solutions coming in, you've increased your warehousing operations, etc. as well. So can you tell us what are the blocks that you're putting in place for further growth for the company. And in light of that, what's the kind of growth that one can expect in FY23 and FY24? So I think, um, you know, uh, we've been really focusing on three, four things. Uh, the first one I think is, you know, uh, historically we are a dominant 3PL business and that's where we've been trying to drive a migration towards end-to-end uh, -to -end solutions. Uh, solutions provide us larger order sizes, uh, you know, provide greater integration with the client's operations and allow us to you know, have a more value-driven approach. Uh, the second one has been growing our, uh, what we call our network transportation businesses. Uh, that's freight forwarding, last mile delivery, and uh, B2B Express. Those businesses have done well and over the last three years have moved from around 5% of our revenue to close to 20% of our revenues, mm. uh, right? And, and then the third thing, of course, is kind of transforming our mobility business. Um, now, underlying that, of course, is a lot of work on digitization, driving you know uh, more consistent operational excellence, um, and driving more purchasing uh, you know, excellence in the system, um, right? But that's kind of been the big focus for us. Okay, uh, Mr. Swaminathan, you know, business has probably seen some kind of a headwind because of crude prices this year, fuel prices. Uh, tell us how exactly does it impact your business? Uh, are, is demand lower because of that? Are you passing on all of the costs? I think from a from a pure uh, margin perspective, uh, you know we do have you know we we do largely pass out uh, all the increases because that's the way we are contracted. Uh, we contract with our clients, uh, so there there is at sometimes some limited timing impact, but for the large part, it's passed through. Um, I think the larger impact is the overhang from an economy perspective uh, because obviously we are seeing a lot of uh, you know pressure from our customers in terms of network expansion um, so so there has been a slowdown in terms of uh, you know of order intake uh, right uh, you know or the pipeline uh, itself has softened a little bit as customers try to uh, just push back some of the network expansions um, and that's where i think we've seen the most telling impact so what what do you mean by slowdown in order intake for example if you had to compare it same time last year uh, what would it have been and what is it currently and what are you forecasting? Sure. So I think if you look at our business, we are really an enterprise uh, B2B business model for the large part. So we do, our business is predicated on long-term contracts with our clients. Um, and, and most of our existing contracts have actually been are, are working quite well. I think they're holding volume. Uh, there is some amount of volume growth in those existing contracts as well. Uh, but the addition of new contracts is where we have seen some slowdown. Uh, right, we're still tracking to our growth targets, uh, but we have seen some slowing down there. What are those uh, growth so targets, if you could uh, quantify them? No, so I think we have set a long-term vision, uh, Manglam, which is to be, you know, to have grow the business to roughly around 10,000 crores in revenue hmm. uh, and try an underlying kind of EBITDA and PAT improvement uh, over the next four or five years. Uh, that still remains the vision for the company, and uh, you know, and that's kind of what we are still, uh, you know, aspiring to uh, to go after. What's the timeline for ten thousand crores in the top line? Well, I think our I, th I think our, our, our vision has been to try and do it in the next four or five years, right? Uh, okay. You know, obviously, mm -hmm. things move up and down. We don't give guidance, uh, mm -hmm. but that still 
remains the broader strategic vision for the company. So this entire order intake slowdown that we, you've seen, uh, maybe a little bit of demand softness, has that changed the ratio of Mahindra versus non-Mahindra business? Are you concentrating more on Mahindra business now simply because you know that there is some amount of uh, continued revenue visibility? Where does the ratio stand? Has it changed and uh, what is your uh, guidance? No, no, nothing has changed materially. I think, okay. uh, you know, as I said, a large part of our business is actually existing contracts hmm. and those still continue, right? Um, and therefore, uh, there has really been no material impact from a revenue perspective for us in terms of, uh, of, of a slowdown. It's just the pace at which we're accelerating, especially on the non-Mahindra side, uh, is probably slowing down by a quarter or so. So, uh, as I said, our, our broader prognosis for demand still remains positive because we think sectoral uh, sectoral macros and uh, overall macros are still very positive for us. Could you give us a sense of uh, how autos will pan out this year? Because, you know, there were semiconductor shortages, etc. That accounts for about 16% of your revenue. Uh, it grew lower than your non-auto business in FY22, but still a 14% growth is uh, by all means, uh, you know, no mean feat. So, what's your outlook on how that business grows? And while you talk about that also, you know, at 10,000 crore, what does your revenue look like? How much comes in from Mahindra's? How much comes in from autos? How much comes in from the last mile, which currently is 20%? So, I would say, uh, just to, to correct some of it, I mean, our automotive business is roughly around 20, 25% of our revenue. And uh, uh, and obviously, that's been Im impacted by the just chip, uh, chip shortages. But we are seeing uh, a positive trend. And as I've as I mentioned earlier, we expect the second half will see a very strong and secular recovery, uh, right? Uh, right from, at least from our OEM customers, uh, Mahindra and non-Mahindra. Um, to, to the other question you asked in terms of you know, how, we see the, how we see the future, obviously a large part of our growth is going to come from the non-Mahindra side. Uh, you know, we have a very strong uh, and dominant position uh, with Mahindra group companies, including the auto and farm businesses. Uh, so our real focus really is on, you know, is going to be on growing the non-Mahindra part of our business, which, as we look forward, will end up being, uh, you know, obviously much higher than the 50% or 52% of our of our revenue uh, it constitutes today. Uh, now we do expect to hold our network services business, not, you know, the last mile delivery business smaller part, but our overall network services, which includes forwarding, last mile, and B2B Express, we expect that to be in the 25% to 30% range as we look out over the next four, five years. Okay, we're going to leave it on that note. Thanks uh, very much for joining in and providing all of that perspective. That's Mahindra Logistics. Uh, stock has been a bit of a uh, underperformer. It's down around 30-odd percent in the past couple of months. It's down over 20-odd percent in the past one year odd. We need to take a short break, but up next, we're going to get talking about the technicals. Manas Jaiswal will join in with his trading strategies on what is a weekday. Stay tuned.